love you. According to Free Willy director Simon Windsor in his conversation with Slash Film, the idea of affording a Michael Jackson song came when the budget for the music increased following the film's positive reception. Although Jackson didn't have the time to write a new song, despite seeing a preview, it was Jerry L. Greenberg who made the suggestion of including Will You Be There. Around the same time, he was recruiting talent for the film's soundtrack, which was then released in collaboration with Epic Soundtracks and Jackson's imprint MJJ Music. Production As producer, Michael Jackson managed to record his compositions, giving them a timeless sound that is difficult to categorize, and which was far removed from the influences of fashion that affected his contemporaries. At the start of the 1990s, the marriage, or more accurately cohabitation, of traditionally produced music and digital music played tricks on a number of artists. Stevie Wonder, for example, succumbed to the artificial magic of synthesizers to such an extent that compositions from that time struggled to recapture the carefreeness and lightness that were typical of his early work. For his part, the king of pop knew that the two approaches could coexist if each element was carefully weighted and integrated. From Stevie Wonder's team, he took on the young Brad Buxer, who installed his synthesizer in the Oceanway studio. The singer teamed him up with the faithful Greg Fillingaines, a stalwart of the old school and of a type of sound that first appeared in the late 1970s with the Jacksons. Greg Fillingaines! <laughs> Rhett Lawrence, who was already present at the time of BAD, oversaw the programming of the synthesizers. Composition The song is written in the key of D major. Jackson's vocal spans from D3 to E5. It has a tempo of 83 beats per minute. Jackson wrote and produced Will You Be There, with co producing credits going to Bruce Sweetian, and orchestrated the rhythm and vocal arrangements. Featured instruments are noted as piano, synthesizer, keyboard, drums, and percussion. Assisted by Bruce Sweetian, Brad Buxer programmed the singular rhythm that wavers between a raga beat and African rhythms. At the time, the rhythm tracks that were in fashion were mostly made from looped samples. George Michael, to name but one, proceeded in this way with the song Soul Free, from his album Listen Without Prejudice, Volume 1, 1990. Michael Jackson, however, refused to yield to this easy option and chose instead to create original sounds. As the song progresses, there is a crescendo, after the singer has performed two verses and a bridge, a gospel choir backs up his questioning. Andre Crouch's group, who already featured at the start of the song, just before the first chords on the piano, delivers a performance that lets its gospel power burst forth, unlike their contained and balanced performance in songs such as Man in the Mirror. The song opens with Jackson's voice, where he says, Hold me, like the River Jordan, and I will then say to thee, You are my friend. Hold me, like the River Jordan. And I will then say to thee, you are my friend. These words represent the singer's plea for a deep, meaningful connection with someone who he trusts and cherishes. The reference to the River Jordan hints at a religious connection, where the river signifies a spiritual cleansing. The chorus of the song, Will You Be There, is the most powerful and iconic part of the song. In this section, Jackson emphasizes that even when someone is going through their struggles, they should know that they're never alone. These lyrics reflect the message that even when it may feel as though the world is against us, there is always someone who will be there to support us. In the song's epilogue, the star recites a moving text, his throat clenched with what appears to be sincere emotion. In our darkest hour, my deepest despair, Will you still care? Will you be there? During a seminar held in Pierre Benite, near Lyon, France, on November 26, 2016, the choreographer Vincent Patterson related how the king of pop, overcome by the text, 
shed real tears when he recited these lines during the recording of the show MTV10 on November 15, 1991 in Santa Monica. The message of the song extends to the idea of self-belief. Jackson encourages listeners to believe in themselves, no matter how difficult things may seem. This is evident in the verses where he encourages listeners to stand up and be strong. These lines implore the listener to believe in their abilities and to know that they are capable of overcoming any obstacle. The album version of the song includes a prelude featuring the Cleveland Orchestra and the Cleveland Orchestra Chorus performing a portion of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. The segment is from the fourth movement and is a lesser-known portion of the famous Ode to Joy. The German lyrics were written by Friedrich Schiller. The album's credits failed to mention this, so the orchestra asserted its rights, and in December 1992, an American judge ordered that Dangerous Sleeve Notes mention the source of the extract. This classical introduction is then followed by a chorale interlude arranged by André and Sander Crouch. The André Crouch singers are heard throughout the rest of the song as well. At the end, Jackson recites a poem. This outro was also featured in his book, Dancing the Dream. Two more edits were created for the Free Willy soundtrack. The first that played in the film's closing credits is similar to the album version but without the prelude and interlude while the single version, also known as Will You Be There, reprise, removes the prelude, interlude, and spoken outro. Vince Patterson directed two music videos for Will You Be There? The official video included Jackson performing the song during various stops of the Dangerous World Tour while scenes from Free Willy centering around the friendship of Jesse and Willy are shown. The original VHS copies of Free Willy included the music video prior to the film. The second video from Dangerous, the short films, contained the full length of MTV's 10th anniversary special performance intercut with the Dangerous World Tour footage and footage of the fans. Before Dangerous had even been released, Michael Jackson decided to create a choreography and screenplay for Will You Be There? He contacted Vincent Patterson, who responded sensitively to the song's spiritual side. He suggested a series of dance steps devised for him, and a screenplay in which he brings about meetings between men, women, and children, who all carry within them the message of the lyrics. As an epilogue, the choreographer suggested that an angel could descend from the sky and envelop the singer in its wings. This rich, ambitious number was first broadcast on the show MTV10, which celebrated the 10th anniversary of the famous music channel. The audience who attended the recording that took place on November 15, 1991 in Santa Monica, therefore heard the song as a preview, before its release. The song was shot and edited by Jackson and Patterson, who were keen to produce an effective. This performance was used as the basis for the clip Vincent Patterson was asked to make in 1993. Legal Issues Will You Be There was the subject of two lawsuits. The first was for copyright infringement of the Cleveland Orchestra's recording and lack of credit to Beethoven for the use of his symphonic prelude. The suit was filed by the Cleveland Orchestra for $7 million and was settled out of court with subsequent pressings of Dangerous including full credits in the album booklet. The second lawsuit was a claim of plagiarism by Italian songwriter Albano Carisi who claimed that Will You Be There was copied from his song I Signi di Balacca, The Swans of Balacca. He filed a complaint in 1993 and embarked on a long legal battle. I'm an entertainer, songwriter, and dancer, as is the case of um, Maestro Albano. These accusations against me are completely false. The American star lost initially in 1995, but eventually won the case in 1999. After seven years, an Italian court ruled in favor of Carisi because Jackson failed to show up to court. In a follow-up case some months later, the court ruled in favor of Jackson and rejected the claim, stating that while the two songs were very similar, they both may have been inspired by the Ink Spot's 1939 hit Bless You for Being an Angel. Bless you for building a new dream. 
Impact of Will You Be There Will You Be There is renowned for its uplifting message, and its impact is widespread. The song has touched the lives of many people around the world. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey, Michael Jackson expressed how he always felt connected to his fans through his music. He stated that he wrote this song specifically to connect with his followers and share a positive message. The song has inspired many people to believe in themselves and to find comfort in the trying times. Jackson's ability to deliver such an impactful message through his music is what makes this song a classic. Because I just can't stop 